Yeah, you read that correctly. I took home over a million dollars in net profit from drop shipping without owning a single store. Now, before you ask what, how, why? Let me preface by introducing myself. My name is Noah Brewer and I have accomplished some dope shit. I've generated over $30 million in e-commerce sales, grew multiple seven figure agencies, and I'm an avid real estate investor. And today I'm going to be dropping the absolute sauce on how I was able to net over a million dollars in profit from drop shipping without owning a single store, without using any of my own money to test products with, and without fulfilling a single single order. Wait, what did he say? He didn't fulfill any orders? No, that's not what I mean. Hang on with me. This very well may be one of the most valuable videos I ever film. One of the simplest and easiest concepts for you to understand that can you can actually go out and implement and make a ton of money with starting today. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Early on in my career, I had the opportunity to partner with somebody on a drop shipping store. It's a pretty long story, but just to keep it short, me and them both wanted to get into drop shipping. There was just one problem for each of us. He had a ton of money and no time. I had a ton of time but no money. So we decided to come together. He would provide 100% of the funding, which at the time was about $300 a week, and I would do 100% of the work. We would then split profits 70-30, where he would get 70% of the net profits, and I would get 30% of the net profits. And basically, I was just doing all the work, growing the store, and he was getting the benefit of just being able to use his money without his time, and basically just trusting me to go in, do the right thing, and if, if I figured out how to make money, I would take 30% percent. Pretty cool, right? So right off the bat, the first store I ever worked on, I didn't even own or use my own money to start testing products with. However, I did in fact do all of the work that went into growing this store, including fulfilling orders in the beginning. But to be fair, it only lasted a few months. Well, how did it go? Well, I found one winning product on this store and we did about $30,000 in revenue in about three months. What about the profit? Well, we made $0. We made no money. I did all the work. He funded the whole project. And after calculating everything, you know, after ad spend product costs, you know, all, all the expenses that was associated with it, he basically decided that because it was just breaking even that he no longer wanted to continue drop shipping. Can you blame him? I did all the work. He risked a little bit of money. He made all of his money back that he put away, but he didn't come out with any net profit. So he was basically just like, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore. And he just quit. So now I'm left with nothing, no store to run, no funds to run with. Remember, this is early in my career. I didn't have much money back then, or so at least that's what I thought. What I had built up until that point was experience. I had tested a few different products. I had found a winning product. I had made revenue, just no profit yet. But it's possible that the method that I was using was actually going to work and just the product wasn't good enough, the margins weren't good enough, whatever the reason was. So it's time to do it again. So I loaded up Shopify.com and started up my own store. Just kidding. I went into a Facebook group and I shouted from the mountaintops, I just did 30K in three months on this guy's store. I work for free and I just take a percentage of profits as a partner. Who is next? And of course, no surprise, a rain of people came knocking because you know they didn't really know what they were doing. They had a bunch of money and they didn't have the time or the expertise to actually go in and make money. So I had more partners. I had more people that were willing to fund the stores and I would just do my work and take my percentage of profits and this time, when I found a winning product, it wasn't breaking even. It actually made a shitload of money. The second store I ended up partnering on, I ended up scaling to $1,000 a day in just two weeks. And this store had 20 to 30% margins the whole way through. The third store that I ended up partnering on, I ended up scaling to $5,000 a day in just 30 days. And this one also had 20 to 30% net margins on it as well. So now I started actually producing an income off of these stores, which remember, I don't actually own the stores. I'm not using my own money to test on them. And at this point, I was not fulfilling orders because it was a part of our agreement that I would basically just handle the marketing and they would handle uh, fulfilling the orders. So I kind of finessed that out of my responsibility as well. And this was like my I figured it out moment. This was the moment where I realized like, whoa, holy shit, this actually works. I'm actually making a good amount of money. And this is also scalable because they're not my stores. And because I'm strictly focused on the marketing of these stores, I can take on a third store and a fourth store and a fifth store. And I can keep this going on and on and on as long as 
as my strategies and my methods work, I can just make other people money and take a cut. And I don't ever have to worry about, you know, owning my own store, or risking my own money or any of that stuff. And that's exactly what I did. Just eight months after even discovering drop shipping, I had generated over a million dollars in gross revenue, not profit yet, but I was personally making over $15,000 a month. Yes, this is within six to eight months of even discovering that this was a thing. And I had also scaled around five stores to six figures or more, multiple stores to multi six figures as well. Without owning a store, without spending a single dollar on product testing, without fulfilling any of the orders or dealing with any of the cash flow issues, I was just handling the marketing of these stores and taking a percentage of the profits as an e com growth partner. The fuck? Well, basically, this is right when I started my YouTube channel. So if you want, you can scroll all all the way down on my YouTube channel and see right when I started making videos was around the point where I hit a million dollars in revenue and you can see me accomplish everything that I've accomplished after that point as I upload them in videos talking about stores that I've grown case studies I even interviewed some of the partners that I was partnered with on these stores and you can watch this entire thing happen in real time and of course over the following years I just continued to take on partnership stores I continued implementing my methods obviously I got much better at my strategies everything got a lot you know more optimized and I just kept on jumping into other people's stores and taking a percentage of profits and keep in mind while yes I would have made a shitload more money if I owned the stores and I just operated them all by myself however because I didn't own the stores and because there was no cash flow cycles or anything like that I was able to do a lot more stores which basically got me really 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 good at finding winning products and scaling them to a point where if you put me on a new store and I just did my marketing magic on it I could have have it doing 5k a day within just a couple of months with very very little effort and this is basically all I did for like three years straight and that's how I generated over 30 million dollars with e-commerce and did drop shipping at pretty much the highest possible scale that you can do drop shipping at the level that I was drop shipping at doesn't even make sense to do if you own all of the stores it only makes sense if you have a massive massive team and a bunch of people working with you to help with the cash flow and all the work that needs to be done and all the orders that need to be fulfilled. I went from that one very first partner store that I ended up taking on doing 30K in, in three months and just breaking even to eventually running over a hundred stores at our peak with a full-time team of 16 people generating upwards of a million dollars every single month. And I did this in pretty much just under three years. Now, hearing this story probably blows your mind and it's definitely cool for me to look back on and how I utilize this, you know, e-com growth partner strategy and mindset to generate millions of dollars and just take my percentage, which did in fact leave me with over a million dollars in net profit in my pocket because I had made my clients that much money. One question that I have is how can you go about doing this? Is this something that is replicable? Can other people go out and become partners with other people's stores, you know, get them to fund the whole thing and then just take a small percentage for doing the work? Is this something I should talk about more? Is this something that maybe I could teach other people do on how to build exactly what I built and they, maybe they can make a ton of money just like I did. Of course it's replicable. And I have actually already taught people how to do this where they would have, you know, one drop shipping store or two drop shipping stores for themselves. And I tell them, hey, as a side gig, you should start up a couple partnerships, which would allow you to continue testing a lot more products, which would, you know, increase your skill level without needing you to risk your own money. And this benefit, it's a mutually beneficial partnership over here. And then once you start generating money and profits from over here, you can take that money and reinvest it into your own stores, your own assets, your own brands, and build your own business like this. And I have one student who did just exactly that, that I would love to introduce you to. So JP, I, I, th I thought it was very interesting when you joined our discord and we started talking again, you already had stores that you were partnered with. You were kind of replicating a little bit of what I was doing, maybe like three to four stores at the time. And I was like, this is crazy. This is exactly what I did. And and this is why you are bringing us like some of the best products and biggest product lists and all this stuff. So where did you learn to do this? Where did you learn to like become an e-com growth partner um, as we're coining it? And how did it go for you? Like, what was that experience like from the beginning? Yeah, so I did um, e-commerce for myself for a few years. And um, I got to a point where I was scared to test products for myself. And I'd rather use other people's money to kind of you know, like with my skills um, to grow stores because I just felt more com comfortable. I didn't overthink much things compared to if I was running my own store. 
Um, but yeah, so from there, just working with other like people, I was able to just like not really overthink everything as I would with my own stores. Um, and yeah, but they went pretty good my stores with clients. Um, I remember one store we did like 5k days with a, um, pocket pharmacy. Um, you TikTok organic people would know exactly what that is. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Very, it was a cool product. Um, what was another one we did? I remember the frog hoodie. We scaled that up good on TikTok as well. I think we got that too. It wasn't like crazy numbers, but I think we did, um, it was running for like a month and a half. I think we got it to like 70 K mm-hmm. revenue. Um, but yeah, so it, it went, it went very well. And yeah, I just kind of rinsed and repeated that whole process with clients. Um, yeah, just for like multiple different clients. Yeah. So you, t- so you, so you basically, from what I understand, you, you were posting on Twitter about the results that you were getting with e-com and they, people would hit you up like, yo, how can I work with you? Or they would ask you a question and you would tell them like, Hey, you know, I can partner with you, run the store. I'll do all the work. Were you fulfilling orders or you weren't fulfilling orders for them? No. So I was drop shipping for myself still a little bit on the side. So I had my uh-huh. own, agent. I had my own agent. So I just um, brought like connected my agent with them. Okay. So you were basically just focused on the marketing and then you took a percentage of the profits. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Yeah. And correct. did you have any experience like before you took on your first partnership where you were like doing the marketing? Have you, did you have a winning product at that point where you brand new to drop shipping? Because I was brand new. Um, I kind of want to touch on like, how did you get people to like trust you to run their stores and actually pay you a percent of profits? Like, I feel like that's a weird transition for people to to start. Yeah. So, yeah. So I I did have a winner before. My highest store was like a hundred. Actually, no. I got to like two hundred thirty k back in twenty twenty one. Um, I started drop shipping late twenty twenty. First winner was the following April. Um, so yeah, I had I had one like decent store at the time. Um, mm-hmm. and then I kind of my Twitter, I just use it like literally as therapy, just like going through stuff, like working by yourself, and just like just get my thoughts out there. Um. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I guess people really resonated with that. But my first client was a kid who I went to college with freshman year. wasn't really close with him or anything. Um, but I actually posted on my Instagram story, have a hundred K business by like 19 years old with like a check mark on it. Mm-hmm. And he hit, he hit me up. That was in November. He hit me up the following January saying, Hey, JP, I just saw your story. I really like would like to work with you. So that was a frog hoodie guy. From there, I used his results on my Twitter. And then mm-hmm. I post, I posted a tweet about that store. And then like literally overnight, my Twitter <laughs> went from like 50 followers to like 600 DMs. DMs had like 100 people in my DMs asking like, hey, how much do you charge for the service? So I got very lucky with that part. Not uh, really, bro. That's exactly how it happened for me because I took I took the first store to 30K. And then right after I went in a Facebook group and posted that, I was like, yo, I just took this store to 30K, you know, who's next? And I got a ton of messages and stuff. And that's how I, that's how I, you know, kept getting partners and stuff after that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, a little luck with it, with my situation, I guess. But yeah, I guess it would be both. Well, you posted results and and people people see results and they follow you and they want to ask you questions and stuff. And yeah, no, for sure. You're right. You know, but one thing that's very interesting about, you know, your story specifically is you were primarily running other people's stores, kind of just like as a side thing while you were running your own store. Um, and I actually remember you, you know, coming to me and being like, oh, this is bullshit because every single winner I find is like on one of my partner stores, not on my store. So you were like, you were sick of finding winning products on other people's stores and you were only getting like 20 or 30 percent. Um but you actually did eventually find your own winning product on your own store, a second one, I think. Um, and that's doing very, very well now. How much do you think taking on the partnership stores and stuff helped in terms of like building the skill because you tested a lot more products and and scaled a few stores? Like, how has that affected your own ability to like build your own business? Yeah. So, I mean, seeing the success that I had for clients, it obviously gave me more confidence with my own stores. Right. Um, you know, finding winners for clients and like I was I was doing a lot of the work for the clients. Right. We were working together, but like obviously I had experience. They didn't have as much as me. Um, so I, I was doing a lot of the work there. 
So yeah, it just gave me like, it gave me confidence moving forward, like with my own stores, um, which is something I really needed because if anyone who does drop shipping and, you know, they're testing products without sales or a winner, they know how frustrating it is. They know that, uh, you know, you could feel bad about yourself and just feel like that you're not good enough, you know, with drop shipping. Um, so yeah, having success with clients gave me more confidence. Dude, it also gave you a shitload of experience, bro. Like there, there were n- none of my other students were bringing me as many products as you were bringing me every single week. Yeah, I I think with that, it's because like I knew I knew the product research, like the product was most important, and I'm seeing that with my store now. If you have the right product, like you could literally, yeah, it, it makes everything so much easy easier. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I knew the product was the most important, you know, you know, part of it. And I thought like I had to put in, put in the most time in product research if I want to get to where, you know, I ultimately want to be. Yeah. But also having the partners was allowing you to test a lot more products than you normally would have been able to, which then motivated you to find more products and just overall, just get better at product research, get more experience at seeing what's saturated, what's out there already, um, all that stuff, which I think helped you a lot in terms of your personal stores. Yeah, I yeah, I would I would agree. Yeah, and it's definitely like one of the ways that I got so so good at Facebook ads and product research so quickly is because instead of just running my own store where it's just like even if you run two to three stores, you're only testing you know five products a week max, and that's if you're working at like a high pace. Whereas if you're doing this sort of structure where you're working on other people's stores you're way more flexible. Like I was testing, you know, 20, 30 products a week within the first like six months of getting into drop shipping. And that was like a small scale for me. Um, and I know that you were probably testing what, like five to 10 per week. Yeah. It was something like that. Yeah. Like, like yeah. people that are just running their own stores, they're testing maybe one to two products a week because they're limited by their own budget, their own time, their own, you know, cash flow cycles. So really the best way to get really, really good, really, really fast is to do a whole lot of something. And I think that this had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, So hearing your story, which by the way, you just surpassed a million dollars in revenue generated, correct? Yep, that's correct. And your own store is actually popping off uh, the last couple of months too, which is cool to see, you know, you going from, you know, growing your first store and then you starting to take on, you know, partnerships and growing their stores and seeing success with those. And then being able to wrap that back into your own store has been amazing. So I would love to ask you if somebody were to try to replicate what you and I have done, like become an e-commerce e-commerce growth partner and get people to you know fund their stores and they can just be uh you know managing partners what would be your advice to them like where can they start where can they get people willing to to partner with them how how can they get the credibility or the confidence to actually be able to bring the results what do you think yeah so i think for that for anyone to really like trust you with their own money you have to have some results to show that's just my personal opinion and like if you don't have the skills like to get results yourself, I would just say find a mentor. That's going to be your easiest way. Um, like with you specifically, um, you taught us like the whole community, um, like a process to follow. And I mm-hmm. followed that process. And then I just replicated that, you know, with my, um, with the partners that I was working with, um, with like finding actual people to work with, I think, you know, yeah, finding actual people to work with. Maybe you can work with a friend and then give them the results and then post those results maybe on a Twitter. That's where I had the most success mm-hmm. when I was starting. Maybe on a Twitter. Um, I don't know if I could really comment on any, you know, other platform because I haven't really built any audience, you know. I mean, it's any- whatever's popping at the time. Like back when I got started, Facebook groups were kind of like the big thing for e-commerce. So I got a lot of my partnerships from Facebook groups and then obviously started my YouTube channel. And then obviously from that point on, it was all from my YouTube channel. Yeah. But Twitter is pretty popping right now too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're, I, we're, yeah. We're, also, we're a good way to, to um, you know, post content. That's where I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Posting content, talking about it, you know, T- telling maybe posting that you're into e-commerce and you have somewhat idea of what you're doing. I mean, it's interesting that you say that you should have some level of results, some level of experience before you partner with people, 
because I didn't like when I first took on the store, I had, I had no experience at all. I never tested a product. I I never even built a store up until that point. Like I was super inexperienced when I got my first partner. Um, And like I said, it was the same structure. I was doing all the work. He was funding a hundred percent of it. And I was taking 30% of the net profits that I would generate. And the reason that he trusted me to run his store and do all the work is because I had a mentor. Mm Mm-hmm. I wasn't yeah. doing like, I wasn't deciding like, oh, what products are we testing? What, how am I going to build the store? How am I going to test the products? I wasn't doing any of that stuff because I didn't have the experience. So what I told him was, look, I don't have the experience, but I have this mentor, this course, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to do everything that this course says. And he trusted the course that I was in. So he said, okay, look, if you're going to follow this course, then I trust you to do this. So I would say either like JP, he had results. You you had a store that did like six figures or something on your own before you took on any partners. Or you go and do what I did, which was like join a mentorship, join a coaching program, and then use kind of the credibility and the uh, education from that program to sell yourself. You know, like, hey, I'm going to follow this program. I invested in myself, this and that. I think either of those options could work very well. Yep, for sure absolutely replicable and jp was able to generate over a million dollars in total revenue with this same exact method granted he didn't do it at as big of a scale as i did but he was able to use the money that he made from his partnerships to fund his own store which is now doing over six figures per month so what do you think of this concept what do you think of this idea is this something that you'd consider doing? Should I talk more about this and how I was able to scale it up so much and make so much money with it? I don't know. This is kind of a concept video. I'm just throwing this idea out there, seeing how you guys react. If you think it would be valuable for me to make more content on this and you want to hear more about all the specific things that I did to make a shitload of money doing this, I'll produce some more content around it. If not, perfectly fine. It'll just be a part of my story and how I decided to go about doing things and how I made a ton of money, but I'm okay with that too. Either way, I hope it was valuable for you. If it was, love to hear your feedback in the comments. Leave a like on the video. This is Noah Brewer. Until next time, peace.